Да, я как... Okay. Yeah, we're live. Uh, okay, we're live, guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome Hi, everyone. to the week four of Robo One Week in Matrix Marathon. Hello, Nicola. Hi, Pavel. Good to see you guys again. Um, okay, so if you guys can hear us and uh, see us well, please let us know in the chat. Uh, say hi to us or just post an emoji. We'll be happy to hear you. Awesome. Hi, Duke and Tommy. Hi, James. Good to see you guys. Okay, <laughs> so we will wa we will wait a couple of minutes until um, every participant joins us. Um, in the meantime, um, yeah, so let us um, go again through what Makers Marathon is to give a quick intro. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, Yuri. I'm the co-founder and design director at Robonikent. And today with me, um, yeah, so we, me and Sofia, who is uh, um, is in Berlin right now, uh, she's uh, uh, our educator at Robonikent. And so we are hosting the Robo Makers Marathon. Um, hi, Sofia. How's hi, it? everyone. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm super excited to talk about new topic today. But yeah. let's start with revising the previous one before. Yeah, so this week is also pretty exciting because we have something new released last week, a new app, and we'll be really, really excited to explore it with you guys. Um, yeah, so let me uh, share the screen really quick and... Uh, intro for everyone who is joining maybe for the first time or yeah just to give you a quick intro so welcome to makers marathon weeks four um so uh the makers marathon is 10 weeks 10 challenges and 10 webinars we are on week four now and it's designed for parents and children to uh explore the possibilities of robo learning kind and join the amazing community of robo uh makers uh, and yeah, all the users of Robo working around the world and build and create together. So uh, we do it on a weekly basis. So we do it uh, every Tuesday. Um, as today, we run an online workshop and a webinar. We review all the submissions from the last week, uh, from the last challenge, and we announce the winner of the last challenge. And we also announce the new challenge for the next week. Um, so you guys have one week to uh, kind of like explore and come up with your solution to uh, the next challenge for this week. And uh, this deadline for the submissions and for the entries to the challenge is on Sunday. So we expect, um, uh, yeah, so uh, if you make your project, make sure you submit it before Sunday where, because we review the projects on the day. And so uh, every week uh, we give out the prizes. Uh, so you have a chance to win some additional modules every week. Uh, so we give out the, uh, uh, some additional motors, um, sensors, and uh, lights. Uh, and uh, so you also have the possibility to, give, uh, to win this super prize, uh, which we keep secret until the week uh 10 so to win the super prize uh you have to collect seven stars and by participating in each webinar you will get one star so um yeah guys let me know in the chat uh if uh you got the stars for the first uh two weeks um i think we had some somebody uh, last week that didn't get the uh, stars okay not yet um Okay, um, good. Uh, we'll double check that, that uh, the stars will be sent after this one. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, for the last first, uh, for the first two weeks, uh, the stars should income in your email. From the, from the week three, we have been posting the stars in the chat. So for this week, in the end, I will also post the uh, star in the chat where you will be able to get it right here. Okay, and now we uh, will get to the project reviews. We actually, from this week, we got uh, the most amount of submissions from all the four weeks before. 
and it's really amazing. It was so many projects there. And yeah, it would be really great to take a look at it and uh, see and actually like announce the winner and tell you guys which of the projects we like, we like the most. And uh, the interesting fact that some of the projects were submitting via email and not via Instagram, this is why we uh, screenshot some of them and put on the next slide. Just um, can you maybe show uh, one of the slides with the projects before? Yes. So... Yeah, exactly. Because not all the projects you can find in our Instagram. Some people just don't want to post on Instagram. They maybe don't have an Instagram. You know, it's not an issue in our modern world. So you can just submit it via email. Um, you can look at some of the projects here and then we double check them on Instagram. Yeah. So, uh, to, uh, yeah, so the, uh, the topic of the last week was animals and, uh, how the, uh, nature inspires the robotics, um, and some amazing creations. So it was really incredible to see you guys create all the, uh, like various animals with some amazing like props. It was really, really cool. Um, so let's start with the first one. Um, the first one was uh, from John Smith, uh, uh, which already participating, I think, uh, from, the, yeah, from the first week. It's really great to see uh, you guys participating every week. And this, this week's project is uh, not an exception. This is really great. So uh, Meredith and John created the uh, the robot duck, which uh, is followed by a little uh, duck things. Um, and yeah, so to see all these amazing like uh, decorations around the project is really, really cool. Um, yeah, so also we have, uh, this week we have two submissions with spiders. I think, yeah, this was also pretty cool. So the first one was from uh, Rem Lauki. Uh, yeah, so this project is, uh, yeah, so it uses the head, uh, the ultrasonic sensor of the robot um, as a spider. And yeah, we have some like laces attached to it, which serve as a uh, like legs and then uh, magnetically it picks up, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's like, it's lunch or something, some food uh, for the spider and uh, yeah, and all of this is possible through the motor with attached string, which kind of like puts the uh, spider down like this. Um, yeah, so uh, it's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, the next project was uh, from, uh, from Matthias Kotat. Um, yeah, I think this is the uh, cat that we uh, made an example during the webinar. I think, yeah, it also turned out pretty cool. So they have the uh, kind of like the, uh, what is this like, not mustache? Is it, the, is it the right word, the mustache on a cat? I don't I, know. I actually have no idea. I think it is yeah. mustache. <laughs> any any okay. native speakers to help us? Yeah, whiskers. So, wow, that's uh, whiskers. whiskers. Exactly, yeah, whiskers. Exactly. I've never, I've never thought about it. But it's cute. Exactly. So thank yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nicola. Uh, yeah. So this guy has a whiskers and the ears. It's really, really cute, and the coat is really uh, complex, and yeah, it makes it the uh, cat almost behave like a real cat, really autonomous. So it's really, really cool. Uh, yeah, so the second, uh, the second uh, spider uh, for this week uh, was also really, really amazing. I think it was from, um, oh yeah, it was from, uh, uh, from Nicola with Iona, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it was also a really, really cool project. I, liked it a lot and the spider looks really amazing with this uh, like legs and the mechanism how it like uh, turns the uh, uh, yeah also like it's lunch uh, it turns around the victim <laughs> uh, on its on its spider web it's really really cool um, yeah so uh, we have um, 
another three projects. So this one was from uh, Julian, Mira, and Jonathan, which uh, who made this snake charmer. I think, yeah, that was also really amazing, which incorporates the sound sensor and uh, makes the uh, like snake wave while uh, you play the uh, like the instrument. That's a really uh, great example of uh, the, the use of the uh, sensor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like, yeah, and yeah, so it, it looks really, really good. I think it looks very natural how the um, like the snake behaves. Uh, I mean, like the, the louder you play, the more kind of like uh, rises up. And yeah, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, so um, one project was from uh, uh, Natal Baron, uh, who made a robot dog. And yeah, it was also really, really cute. Uh, so the robot made some uh, dog sounds and uh, there was a puppy who was reacting to those sounds and kind of like was meeting the robot. And yeah, I think, I think they became friends after that. So that is also really cool. Um, and the winner of this week is uh, the project which just, uh, yeah, just kind of like honestly, it just blew my mind how uh, like complex and like how much dedication was put into it. So it was the Robo Papa guy made uh, by Carla and Stefan Wasserbauer. And yeah, guys, if you want to check out this project, go to Instagram, hashtag Robomakers Marathon. It's seriously just a work of art. Uh, the amount of work they put into making this bubble guy just amazing. So the, they made the outfit, uh, yeah, which was, was put on top of the uh, parrot. And uh, yeah, so they program it so it reacts to uh, like, uh, to the speech, right? So it reacts to the sounds and then responds back. So yeah, congratulations to Carla. Um, that's, congrats, that's a really, really nice project. It's uh, like from my perspective, it's one of the best I've seen um, yeah, compared to, you know, like if you think how much effort was put in it and how much love I think was put on this animal, that's really, that's really yeah, beautiful project. It's amazing. Um, Okay, so this this was, uh, of course, we had some more uh, submissions which were sent to us uh, by email, uh, right? So we uh, have put them here in the uh, slide deck as well. So you have a chance to check them out after, uh, after the webinar um, as well. So thank you a lot, guys, for participating in the last week. It was really, really cool. Um, and I think we can move to the next week. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, this week uh, um, topic is going to be really, really exciting for us. I think, I hope it is for, uh, it's going to be as exciting for you guys as well. So I think, yeah, so far you can, we can switch to you and you can continue the presentation from there. Yeah, can you see me and my presentation at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, I did it. This is the this is actually the new way I'm trying it today. I'm trying to screen to share my screen and be here at the same time. Awesome. Pretty excited for me. Awesome. I see the chat. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. I feel very, very excited. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Okay, um, let's come back to our topic today. But before announcing the topic, I really want to ask you a few questions. Please answer in the chat, and it would be just great to cooperate on defining the topic. So the questions are, what is coding? Like, do you guys know what is coding? If there, if um, some, you know, professional coders are there, just don't, don't text anything. I know guys, you know, but as you are not a coder, if you're not an, you know, an engineer, do you know yourself what coding is? What is a programming language then? And what programming languages do you know? Can can you please chat some answers? It would be just great to know your opinion on it. Yeah. So we and have, yeah, we have somebody typing in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. I'm waiting for your answers. And the the last. Yeah, there are some 
some answers about the programming languages, right? That's HTML, CSS, Java, PHP, yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's great. But what is a programming language then? It's just how it is different from our language and why it's called language. Minecraft, actually, yeah, that's very nice um, programming language. Some key, even some kids can program on it. Um, does anyone like? Um, is it that's it? Any any other submissions? Okay. Robo Wunderkind, yeah, Robo Wunderkind, but RoboCode is a visual programming language. That's right. That's very very true. But to like. See, we know some examples of it. We basically have an idea of what programming language is. But let's think about a definition. This is, will be the thing we're going to learn in our webinar today. And the last question is, does anyone need to know how to code? If you're an artist, if you're a teacher, if you teach um, a language, if you teach art, if you teach music, do you really need to code? You really need to know how to code yeah, and how code works. What do you think, Yuri? I think, um, yeah, I think uh, coding can be really, really useful uh, in, yeah, because it teaches you so many valuable skills like algorithmic thinking. Just, I think it gives you a really uh, structural way how to uh, like do different tasks. And it's definitely uh, like a skill which can be used in many, many different uh, like subjects, not not only in, uh, coding. <laughs> that's in that's very true. Yuri basically just uh, um, made a spoiler right. about our topic yeah. today, but it's all fine. We're going to talk about in details. Yeah. And our topic today is discover programming languages and discover Blockly. Um, Blockly is a programming language, and we're going to talk about it today. We're going to discuss a get inspired, build a robot, and code and have fun. But we're going to code in Blockly in another programming language and compare it to robot code as well. Uh, let's move to our learning outcomes. So, what will we learn today is we will learn what programming language is in general. Um, we will talk about different programming languages as well, why it is important to, to know how code works and how programming works. And also we're going to talk in details about blocky programming language. And for sure, at the end, you will be ready to create your own project with Robo Wunderkind. Great, let's go. Programming language is actually just a language. Um, it's the same language we speak, just different in the way that this language is understandable for a machine or a robot. It is a vocabulary and set of grammatical rules. Um, is the same way you have in our language, the same in English or in any other language. But these rules instruct a computer or a compu computing device to perform specific tasks. So basically, this is the language we can speak to a computer or a machine. There are many different uh, languages. I just never thought about it, but there are 250 different programming languages. Can you just imagine that? This is amazing. This is amazing. This is probably I mean, it so much time to learn all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are more, more popular, some of them less popular. I have a picture here when you can uh, read some of the most popular programming languages like um, Swift, Java, Python. And you also know RoboCode, right? This is also a visual programming language we created to code our robot. Um, yeah. But why is it important to know how code works? Even if you, uh, if even even if you work, um, isn't related to coding. So coding is another language. There are some rules. There are some vocabulary. So learning how to code is learning another language. And as scientists suggest now that learning another language and being bilingual, it actually helps to develop different abilities and skills in your brain. Like it develop, it um, helps your memory and helps your ability to express yourself. So this is just great to know another language. So the next time you think about learning a new language, just, just learn programming language. 
Um, yeah, we have an answer uh, in our chat. Coding helps to automate things. This is right. And this is interesting thing. And once you learn how to make things more efficient, you just start doing it all the time in your life. You just automate them all the time just because it's easier for you now, right? Yeah. Um, the second thing is computer literacy. When you know how your computer works, you can use your computer better. You can use specific, you know, um, you can solve specific tasks with your tech devices. That's it. Um, it involves problem solving process. So to, uh, to code, you need to solve a certain problem. And this problem solving process for different tasks is the same. If you solve a problem in your life or solve a problem in your computer, the, the process will be the same. You will go through the same steps. So when you're coding, you're practicing your problem solving skills. It's just easy like that. And also it can be used to invent and make different things, not only related to coding, but as we've seen, from our last week, it can be used in art or in music or playing sports. So basically with coding, you can seriously make something, create something, not only use technology, but create your own technology and technological solutions. And also coding is fun and creative, you know? Just look how, how many different amazing things you can create while coding. That's basically the whole list of things the, the, which can motivate you to learn a uh, programming language. Okay. Do you have yeah. any other ideas? Maybe? <laughs> Someone? No? Can we move forward? Okay. Yeah. I think coding is really, really, um, why coding is can be creative because there's so many different um, ways to solve a certain problem, right? Because there's not only way to code something, there can be so many ways and that's why it's so fun actually, because you can right, yeah, as I said, just like explore different possibilities and try to find the most beautiful or the most um, efficient way to solve something. That's very, very true. And you can also um, talk to your friends and find different solutions for one task. This is just amazing yeah. how you can be creative together. You can cooperate or call code together to make a more beautiful, almost efficient, uh, efficient solution, right? Yeah. That's, that's good. And let's uh, talk about what code or program is. So as we discussed, code is a set of instructions which tells a computer or a machine or a robot in its programming language, in its computer language, what to do. And it's a sequence of short commands one after another. Then let's talk about the second term, algorithm. And actually algorithm is step-by-step -step solution for one task. So how is it different from code? The answer is that algorithm can be written in any language, in English or in German or in any other, other language. But a code is an algorithm written in a computer language, in a programming language. So when you want to code something very, very complex, sometimes it's helpful to create an algorithm in your own language, what you want to code. Yeah. Step one, step two, step three, and step four. And then we, you just can translate it in a coding language, in a programming language for your robot to understand. And why we also need to know what an algorithm is? Just because we use it every day. When you go and brush your teeth, this is an algorithm. You know that you need your, your brush, some paste, then you brush your teeth, then you clean it, then you put it back, and then you drink some water. This is an algorithm. You do it every day, every morning or evening, or every morning and evening. And this is an algorithm or a cooking recipe. This is another algorithm you follow all the time. You have concrete steps and you follow them as the machine does. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you have a goal to like have your teeth clean and you're like, okay, how can I get my teeth clean? And you have like <laughs> steps, uh, right? One after another, how to get your teeth clean. So that's how the algorithm works. 
Yeah, exactly. But sometimes we have some algorithms that we perform every day without thinking about it. Yeah. When we dress up for going outside, it's also an algorithm. You need to to start uh, to choose your uh, clothes and then to put it on, right? This is an algorithm, not algorithm. So we actually um, have this algorithm in everyday life. And then we just yeah. translate them into a code to for our robot to understand. So today we're going to learn another programming language. This language called Blockly. And it, it is a visual programming language. It's based on different blocks. This is why it's called Blockly. And those blocks are combined um, one under another. And this is a major different difference between robot code and robot blockly the how you place your actions or blocks and robot blockly is uh derived from scratch correct um i cannot really answer this question because as i know they were developed just in two different uh, institu institutions yeah, and uh, by MIT and mm -hmm. by Google and those yeah, those two frameworks, they kind of like open And source. as I know, they are both open source and also they both were developed almost at the same time. So I cannot really answer the question if it is derived from scratch or they were developed yeah. So together. when we were uh, like designing this app, we were actually um, yeah taking the inspiration from scratch because yeah, I think uh, scratch is, uh, yeah, it's it's very popular in programming interface. Like a lot, it has a lot of users all over the world, and many people actually familiar with its interface. And uh, yeah, so I, also I think it just look, like visually looks more clean than blockly, and it's it's much easier to understand. So yeah, so it's in in many ways it is inspired by Scratch, but then adapted to Herbal Wunderkind and somewhere even improved, where you will probably see in the future. Like for example, the values monitor. Which is not like it's not existing in other systems, and we put it here. But yeah, we can <laughs> we can explore it later. Yeah, and coming back to Robert Blockly, why it is important to learn it? Um, because it allows you to take your programming to just a new level. You can solve problems or ch challenges you couldn't solve with um, robot code. This is it's, it's just more advanced coding. And how it's more advanced, we're going to talk about it a little bit today and maybe, not maybe, but we also plan it for a future. We will have an additional webinar on it to talk about more advanced programming. Um, it will be the webinar num number nine, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or 10, 10. Yeah, this is gonna be the yeah. final, but um, yeah, so the final one, yeah, the final one. Exactly. Yeah, it's a small spoiler now, but for for people who are interested in taking programming to a new level, to to take a new challenge, uh, watch out for the last one. And today we are going to build this awesome device. Uh, why a device? Just because we want to show you that with robot. Uh, with our robot, you can build devices you use every day. So this is actually it can be just very helpful. It's just it's not a toy, just a toy. Your toy is it can be very very helpful in everyday life. And this is smart kitchen timer we're going to build. And um, while building and coding it, we're going to talk about how to use robot block in general, so about some simple blocks and about some uh, advanced functions. It's a building time. Today we need those blocks, um, models, it's main block, um, a light, a button. We also used um, one big wheel and you can also use some materials or so Lego blocks um, to make your um, device more interesting or more unique. Um, yeah. What we're going to do today is pretty simple. Uh, just to show you guys how to, to take you guys through some basic robot blocking. So yeah, um, I already have the, the device pre-built here. Uh, how about you, Sofa? Yeah, yeah, I already have pre-built here. Already have it uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I already have it. I mean, it was like one or two minutes to build. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is anyone building? Yeah, yeah, ready. Is anyone yeah. else building with this? Uh, 
Nope. Yeah, actually, um, it's a good time to um, ask you guys some questions. So um, I will publish a poll in the chat. So let us guys know who is actually participating in the webinar. Um, and while you're doing it, please uh, download the Robo Blockly app. We completely forgot to tell you about it. It was just so exciting to present our topic today. But please do download it now if you don't have it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you will need the Robo Block app to use Robo Block. So. Yeah. Already done. That's great. Thank you so much. You just uh, made it easier for us. Yeah, great. And this is the code. Um, we are going to create the code now. But before, but before creating the code, I want uh, to show you an algorithm. Because we're going to create the code, which is a bit more complex than usual, we just need an algorithm. It's just a short plan for Robot Kitchen Timer to perform. Um, so the step one is Robot Kitchen Timer is counting the set time. We're going to set the time. We want our cake be ready in five, 10 minutes. It will be shorter for today. No worries, we're going to wait like five to, to 10 seconds maybe. Then time is over, there is an alarm. Uh, Robert Kishi Diver performs an alarm and we press the button and it stops. That's it. This is our algorithm. And now we are going to translate this algorithm to a language for our robot to understand. And this is the complete algorithm, uh, complete code, translated algorithm to Robo Blockly. And from now on, we're going to switch to Robo Blockly app and just break down this um, code into small steps yeah um okay i can in the meantime i can answer some questions from the chat so the first one is uh from lucy teams is the uh, block available for windows um i think it should be available for windows uh like um, I need to double check with guys if we already released it for Windows, but it, def it should be available. Like if it's not yet, it's gonna be in the next days. And uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it should be available on every platform for Windows as well. Um, good, so the, um, another question is Alejandro from Alejandro Concha. Uh, so the question is where I have to submit my projects, uh, tagging robot into Instagram or somewhere else. So the projects uh, can be submitted on Instagram with the hashtag RoboMakersMarathon. So we'll post it in the end of the webinar or they could, could be sent directly to us uh, via email at uh, RoboMaker, sorry, MakersMarathon at RoboWinnerKing.com. But yeah, I will post this information later in the chat. Okay, so the um, okay, so the next question is from Pavel Bernstein. Uh, do you plan to translate it to different languages? Ability to change the language in the settings, something like this. Um, it is a good um, option to change it, but like at this moment, we don't plan it to translate to different languages. So for now. It's going to be in English, uh, but maybe we'll look into this possibility in the future. Um, if we're done with questions, can we move to yeah, I think we can. Okay. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I cannot screen the, the screen of my iPad. I will show you like this and I also uh, show you it on the slides. So when we start programming in Robo Blockly, we just open a new project. It's the same interface we have in two different apps you already used before. So it's easy. We just take a plus and we start with this. This when start is event, which um, indicates that you start your code here. Then we need to add some other blocks. And the first block we're going to add is uh, setting our um, light to green color, indicating that it's colored in time. And here is the measure um, difference from robot code. When we 
code with robot code, we can only make our light glow until the next the next uh, action happening. And here we set the LED, and it will be glowing until the next um, the next LED is set. So yeah, cool. uh, maybe it's too abstract now. Don't worry, we go into experience it. So believe me, it's just will be glowing this five seconds we're going to wait. So wait five seconds is the step one uh, when our robot is counting the time. Five seconds, easy time. Maybe my cake I'm baking now will be ready in five seconds. Pretty easy, pretty quick. Okay, good. And then when we our cake is ready, we need to add two different um, blocks. One of them is change of the light. We're going to change it to the red one, indicating that an alarm alarm going to play. And the second one is the play sound alarm. And why are these two blocks in something else, like a frame? This frame is called flow, and it's indicating that this frame is going to re be repeated until we press the button. We can actually set any other different um, uh, functions that are going to affect it. Uh, this is the code. Is someone coding with us right now? Um, okay. mm, no, I'm, um, yeah, this is, I just made it big, right, guys? Okay, yeah, it's better now. Yeah, yeah, that's big now. So once again, we have the start, we have uh, the code before alarm, the alarm code here, um, and then the button pressed. Yeah. Is so someone- I can maybe um, elaborate on the difference between robot code and robot block a little bit more. So... Uh, let's maybe just play the code before and see how our robot behave, and then we'll just explain the difference. Uh, because we just called yeah, it, let's see it. Of course. So uh, mine is ready. Uh, is someone else building with us? Is yours uh, ready, Yuri? Um, I'm in the process of coding right now. Okay. So wait five seconds. Yeah, sure. Then repeat until. Yeah, I think like the command um, in the uh, repeat until block um, mm -hmm. for the light, I think can be set to shine instead of set. Um, but yeah, that should work as well too. Okay, yeah. Uh, you ready? My code is ready, yeah. Okay. Uh, Do you want to show it or should I show it? That's okay. I will try it out now. So this okay. is there. I pressing the start. It waits for five seconds. Is it glowing? Oh yeah, I didn't. I have not set up the. You see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I need to set up the camera. Okay, so I'm pressing play right now. It goes um, green for five seconds. Then uh, shines red and plays the alarm sound. That's Until cool. I press the, button. Da, da, da. <laughs> the button is pressed, it stopped. Great, okay. you did so, it. Um, yeah, so Nicola, answering your question why uh, the alarm doesn't stop with, with the button press. So the uh, way the uh, block B works. So it checks if the button is pressed in the beginning of uh, this piece of code. So when it's so every time it goes, uh, it completes this piece of code. It goes back and checks if the button is pressed. So if in this moment the button is pressed, it's gonna stop. Um, otherwise, it will continue to uh, uh, perform those commands. Okay. Uh, 
another question or why does it blink and why does the red go off the coach just seems to say to set to on i think okay. yuri just did another code right i think uh, yeah you just um, another, i another... think the code a little bit so uh we can actually um okay let's try it with set command um so i put it on red and uh yeah let's try it with uh with the red one so it waits for five seconds then yeah so it is staying red and i have to hold the button and then it comes. cool we did it and okay. even if you see this this card looks a bit more complex it's actually pretty easy this is one of the easiest uh, codes you can create with robert blockly actually you can create so much more different complex things and this is um the point when yuri probably is going to explain a little bit more about difference between robot code and robot blockly yeah i just just wanted to um yeah make it more clear I, like i hope it will make it more clear for you guys so the uh robot code is kind of like uh, based on the states logic, so uh, your device is switching between different states. Um, and the, um, so, for example, I don't know when the uh, LED is shining red, um, or like we in this case we could have like two states. The timer is counting, and the timer is uh, set off and playing the alarm. So the the timer will be switching between those two states and the robot blockly it's uh so you perform the commands one after another so this the, that's the main difference and uh, yeah so the commands can be uh, uh yeah so uh, it doesn't have the state so you, you you go through the sequence and perform the commands Once uh, they have a question, once in a state stays in TO say not. Is it true? Uh, if I'm if I'm understanding the question uh, right, so like you can set up uh, the condition for exiting the uh, uh, certain state by using different sensors, and you can set up the sensor differently depending on what you want. So, for example, um, yeah, if um, if you can see my screen here, um, I will so make it we, bigger. Okay, I hope you can see it. So I can press on uh, this button here, and I can choose if, if it's released or uh, pressed, and I can choose the condition of what it uh, what it should be. So I can either um, exit the state on the release condition or the press condition. Great. Thank you for your for some details. Yeah, sure. Let's let's continue. This is one of the like as I said, it's pretty easy to code. It was pretty easy to code. You can uh, build more complex codes. Uh, we actually planned some extension now, but I think uh, time-wise, we're not going to do it today. But if you wanna uh, do it and send it, uh, send us your very complex code, feel welcome. Just tag us on Instagram. We will take a look at your super complex codes. And let's move to some inspiration. This is other devices we actually uh, prepared as some examples. Can you maybe guess what devices are here on this slide? We have three devices here. Let's 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 try to answer what kind of devices are here. Do you know, Yuri, what kind of devices are here? Um, yeah, I think the first one is uh, like a lantern. So it has the handle on, on the top so you can like uh, take it and take it with you somewhere. Huh, um, actually not. I, I thought it's not uh, not starch. I think it, I, I thought when I was building it, uh, my idea was that um, is an alarm clock you use every day, and I I put the wire connect on it because you know all these old school alarms you had in your childhood. They had this kind of connection. 
uh, like the handler. Yeah. Yeah, this is this was my idea, but you see, okay. you, know, <laughs> you also were very creative. This this one. Uh, yeah, the second one is flashlight. Pavel, thank you. And what is the last one? The third one. Uh, uh, any ideas? Yeah, so it looks like a fan. It's a yeah. fan. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> it's a fan. Actually, yeah, it's a fan. We built this fan in, and we, we didn't code it, but we used the Robo Life to make it turn around all the time. But with Robo uh, Block layer can also make this program possible. Uh, cool. Let's move uh, to our goal for the next Maker Smartphone. The challenge four is to code your robot household device with robot blockly. So think about the device you use every day. We already had some inspiration on the previous slides or just think what you use every day and what would you like your robot to tran transform into and please code it in robot blockly. And it would be just great if you could submit both your robot build and your robot code um, in Blockly when you submit your project. It would be um, super cool to know what you did and how yeah. complex it is. <laughs> and uh, we also have another inspiration for you. This is the real project we had um, in one of our um, monthly challenges. And can you recognize what? Is it? It's a mixer. Thank you, Nicole. Exactly. This is a mixer. Pretty handy, right? Yeah. And also created with Robo Wunderkind. And if you don't have a robot, no worries. Be creative. Draw your robot. Draw your code and submit. And you can also uh, get a star and win the prize. Um, Okay, I think it was it from my side. Uh, don't forget about the hashtag Robomakers Marathon. You can also email us your project. Um, you see the email here. And we also have some information to post, right? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna post it in the chat right now. Um, oops. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit foggy on my side. I hope it will work. Yeah. You have the information I already said about submitting, and you can also find some tutorials and inspiration on our YouTube channel. Get the discount if you if you don't have your robot now. And if you have any questions, this is the perfect time to ask questions. We will wait a few few seconds, minutes to to see if uh, there are any questions we haven't answered yet. I think uh, we didn't have any more questions. If you if you guys have any questions, feel free to type it in directly in the chat. So we have a few minutes to answer your questions. Um, yeah. yeah, so to collect your star for this webinar, uh, follow the link in the last message so you can download the star directly from here. Uh, and thank you so much for participating in this webinar. It's really great to see you guys and to explore some uh, building and coding possibilities with you, create some amazing projects. Um, uh, they actually do have a question. Oh, yeah. OK. Uh, will, they are video. tutorials, videos. Exactly. Yeah, so if you, uh, yeah, so to find the tutorial videos, you can go to our YouTube channel. Uh, and yeah, we have some really, really cool uh, examples of the projects there. Um, I'm, I'm going to post the link right now. Great, thank you, Yuri. I think that's it uh, for Nicola. Sure, keep it simple. Um, I think that you can try to code it with Robo Blockly, but if you cannot, we also will be super, super happy to see your project uh, because we understand that age plays some role here. So if you still want to participate, that's not a problem. Just do your way, and we will be happy to see it. Absolutely. Yeah, 
Uh, we have a, another another chat that um, Lucy loves Robo Blockly, and we love it too. We're super happy to release it. Thank you, guys. Thank I think this is a great this is a great moment to stop talking and uh, say goodbye for you guys. Thank you for watching and have a great Thank week. Looking forward to see your projects. Um, good. Thank you so Yay. much, guys. See you next week, and we're looking forward a lot to your projects and submissions this week. Have a good week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.